Okay, so I'm doing something a little bit different today and I'm going to do a video talking about all of the books that I've been reading. Um, so I, growing up, was super into reading. Um, one of my hobbies as a child, even into like high school. But then when I got into like college, I really kind of stopped doing a lot of like reading for fun and was just doing like a lot of reading for school and everything like that. And then transitioning out of college, um, moving into like working full time and like living on my own and stuff like that, I really was not doing a lot of like reading for fun. Uh, over the last couple years, I've kind of started to get back into that by listening to audiobooks. And then over the quarantine, um, like the, over like this past year, I guess, um, I've spent a lot more time at home. So I've been doing a lot of listening to audiobooks and a lot of um, actually like reading books as well, starting to get back more into that as well. So I wanted to do a video talking about all of the books that I read this fall and then I wanted to also talk about all of the video or all the videos, all of the books that I want to read this winter. I'm not going to say necessarily by the end of the year um, because today is December 1st so I only have you know like 30 more days but I've been reading a lot so we'll see what I get through. Um, maybe I will do like an end of the month wrap up and like start doing those if that's something that like people are interested in. So let's move into this. So the first few bit books that I'm going to talk about are going to be audiobooks and I'm just going to reference my Goodreads account. Um, I have a Goodreads account and have been like, you know, tracking like all the books and my ratings of them and things like that. So starting off this fall, one of the first books that I listened to, one of the first books that I started listening to was The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Lucy Foley? 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 Um, and I started listening to it. I got about like I don't know maybe a third of the way through it and I was feeling a little bored with it so I actually quit reading it for a little bit um, but then I ended up finishing it later on so I gave this book an overall rating of four out of five stars so this book for me had a lot of characters in it like I typically don't like books that are following like too many different points of views of too many different characters so I think that's why I was kind of having a hard time getting into the book because this book really does go into like pretty in depth with like a lot of the characters in the book. So essentially in this story you are following the different guests at a wedding and it's at a wedding on kind of like a remote island. The book starts out and there's been a murder and so the whole book you're kind of trying to figure out like who was murdered, why they were murdered, and you're just kind of following all of the events leading up to that murder through all of these different characters. You're kind of like going in between like the night of the wedding when this person is murdered and then like these days leading up to it and you know trying to figure out like who did it and then you're kind of starting to learn more and more about these characters and like how their lives kind of start to intertwine and like I said, I was kind of having a hard time with it the first part of the book, but then when I had decided that I was going to start reading it again or listening to it again, I got pretty invested in these characters. And then like towards the end of the book, maybe the last quarter, last third of the book, tea was spilled. Like these characters had some drama and like once all that started happening, I couldn't stop listening to it. I was like, dang. like. I am so glad that I stuck through that, you know, first part of the book so I could like, so I could get to this part. It was really good. I loved the ending of the book. It was just really good. So four out of five stars for me. Moving on. We have the book Leave the World Behind. This book I started reading at the beginning of October. <clears throat> And I started reading this book because Miss Jenna Bush Hager from the Today Show 
recommended this book. This was like, she does like a little like book club thing on the Today Show, I guess. And this was her recommendation for the month. And I, she made this book sound so good. Like she was like, it's like the best spooky season book. Like read this book with the lights on. It's gonna creep you the fuck out. And I was like, yes, Jenna, yes. Like, this is what I'm, like, talking about. October, spooky season, creepy vibes. Jenna. Jenna. I do not trust you anymore, bitch. Okay, so I give this book a one out of five stars. I don't know if I said that already. Um, I hated this book. It was literally a book about nothing. Like, all of the interesting things happening in this book were so briefly mentioned that I was like, I kept waiting for something to happen. So essentially, this book follows a family who is getting out of town for like a long weekend in the summer. They, I think, are from like New York City. They're just, you know, going out to the countryside. They rented an Airbnb for the week and they're ready to have this family vacation. So they're there in a small town with no cell phone reception, living their best life, okay? And so then that night, they're, you know, kids are in bed, mom and dad are hanging out, someone knocks on the door. And it turns out that it's the owners of the Airbnb. And so they're like, hey, something crazy happened in town and um, we need to stay here. Like, we can't go back to our apartment. We own this house, like, we need to stay here. Like, we know that you rented it, but like, sorry like it's an emergency or whatever so like then you're kind of like who like who are these people do these people oh actually own the house like are these people running some kind of scam or something and like so like that's kind of like all i knew about the book like going into it and so it's like okay like shit's about to get crazy i'm like these people are gonna be held hostage like it's gonna be not no mm -mm. nope Literally, nothing happened the whole book. Like, they basically imply, I, sorry, this might be a spoiler if you want to read this book, but I would not recommend it. They basically imply that, like, some type of, like, disaster happens and, like, the power grid is out and, like, the world is basically ending. But they don't tell you, and there's, like, all these weird flocks of animals and things, and it's, like, they just like casually mention these things and then continue to deep dive into like these characters in the book and like their lives and like these characters are not interesting likable people at all you know so it's like okay i don't like the characters i want to know more about this like apparent end of times that's happening on the outside of the world and like you just don't like there's no storyline there's no plot like it the book just ends you know you just it was such a disappointment total disappointment i guess like it's not a thriller it's not a mystery like these are all the things that i thought it was gonna be and like it just wasn't so i guess maybe my fault was having too high of an expectation for this book, but cannot recommend. Moving on, let me tell you about a five star book that I read right after that. So the next book that I read this fall was called Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Sager, Sager, I'm not too sure how you pronounce that. You guys, this was like the funnest book ever. I could not stop listening to it. It was so much fun. It's basically like a haunted house kind of story. Um, the book follows our main character who essentially like grew up in a haunted house and 
from their experiences living in that house, her dad wrote a book about it, um, about their experiences living in this haunted house for this short period of time. And the daughter essentially doesn't remember anything that happened in the house. Like she doesn't remember any of it. So she thinks that this whole story that her dad wrote is fake. She's like, I don't believe that. None of that happened. Like this whole book is a lie. And like she basically says that this book that her dad wrote ruined her life because it was like a number one bestseller. Like everyone had read it. So like she was just getting a lot of attention like as a child and even into her adult life that like was really not wanted and you know people would ask her about the haunted house and all this shit and she was like it's fake you know then it, her dad passes away leaves the house to her and she's actually in the business of like flipping houses so she's like okay well i'm just gonna go there check out the situation and basically she's like i'm gonna flip this house and i'm gonna sell it get rid of it and so the book follows her and her experiences being back in this town and back at that house and then it also tells the story that the dad wrote so every other chapter is like her being in the house experiencing all these things and then it's also like telling the story about what happened there before that she said like was fake but like is it i don't know this book was really fun I really enjoyed it. It was so good for spooky season. Like, it wasn't like overly creepy or anything, you know? It wasn't, it was just like a fun, spooky book. And I loved it. I gave it a five out of five. I would read it again. I really think that it would be good to be like adapted into a movie. I loved it. And the twist at the end, it like twisted. And I was like, oh my God. And then it twisted twisted again and I was like what what so I loved that book and because I loved that book so much I decided to read another Riley Sager book and he has a few books out I've heard really good things about all of them so the next one that I chose to read was called lock every door you guys another banger five out of five for that one too another just like really fun horror story you know and it's not like horror uh, horror thriller you know like nothing it was it was good it was super fun this story essentially follows a girl who gets lives in New York City and gets a job um, apartment sitting a apartment in this really old and historic prestigious hotel and basically they're gonna pay her like a shit ton of money to just like live at this apartment and she's like okay like sounds too good to be true but like i'm gonna do it anyway and so then after that um things end up being too good to be true um people start going missing um you're finding out about people who used to live there who are missing a lot of missing people kind of things happening and then another twist at the end that i was just like really not expecting at all i was like what so fun ending overall fun book five out of five recommend so then i read the silent patient um the silent patient by alex michaelides i'm certain i'm saying that wrong um this one I gave four out of five stars to. This was a pretty interesting book, but it was pretty like slow moving. It was kind of like a thriller mystery book, I would say. It was, it was interesting though. I mean, the whole time I was kind of left wondering like who done it. Uh, this book follows a psychiatrist, I believe, or a psychologist therapist something in like the mental health industry uh, that's what he does and then uh, a woman who is an artist who murdered her husband and since then has not spoken a single word she was sent to a like mental hospital ward situation so she basically just like 
lives there and like doesn't talk to people um and so I guess her case was like kind of a notorious case because she was like a really famous artist and basically no one knows what happened to her husband or why she killed him or anything and so this book follows this doctor who goes and works at this hospital who is trying to like cure her and like make her talk again and like figure out what happened uh, to her husband so you kind of follow him and like his experiences working with her and then you follow her and like her life leading up to the murder so it kind of like goes between the two and it was good i liked i liked it i didn't like really see the end coming so it was it was good four out of five for me so next i listened to and then there were none by agatha christie and this one i picked because i you know heard good things about it had good reviews and it was like a pretty short book i think it was only like five hours or something like not a long audiobook at all and so i was like oh i can listen to that book in a day like i had like a lot of chores or something to do and i was like oh yeah i'll finish that in like no time it was so hard for me to get into this book because once again this book follows too many characters this book has like 10 different characters in it and like for me that's just too many people to be following like i can't i can't care about 10 different people i just can't this book is essentially about 10 different strangers who are sent to an island and then once they get there they all kind of realize that they've been sent there for different reasons and um slowly one by one people start dying people are you know end up dead at first they're like it's a coincidence and then they're like mm, this seems kind of sus and so Essentially, the whole book is kind of like who out of these 10 people is the murderer. Um, and I did have a hard time getting into it because there were so many characters in it. Um, but then once it kind of got down to like, you know, once more people had died and I like didn't have to follow as many people's stories, then I got pretty into it. Then I was really like, okay, but who did it? And so it was just kind of like a classic whodunit story. And I didn't see the end coming. <laughs> I guess like, I just, I, once I got to the end of it, I was like, damn, like that? Who did it? Like, I was shook. So I gave it four to five just for the ending alone. Um, but I had to dock points because there were just too many characters and all right moving on the next book that I read was The Whisper Man by Alex North you guys I loved this book I loved it so much it was just like chef's kiss delightful this book follows a young boy and his father um, who have recently lost the young boy has recently lost his mother and so they decide that they're going to move to a new town to just kind of start fresh and like you know move on because like the mom died in the house that they lived in so it was like ugh, you know let's let's get out of here so they move to a new town and meanwhile in this town there are copycat murders happening from the whisper man who is essentially like a serial killer who will basically sit outside kids windows and like whisper to them and then he kidnaps them and kills them so they're starting to see like copycat murders of this happening in the same town so you're kind of following this young boy and his dad and like the struggles that they have through grief and like their own relationship and then you're also following like this crime story of 
who is this person who is kidnapping children and murdering them. Meanwhile, this small boy who has just moved to this town with his dad is like totally like the MO of the MO, the um profile the He's basically the serial killer's type. I don't know how to say that. Um, so anyway, then eventually like these stories intertwine. There is like family drama happening. Um, I really, I mean, there's like a mystery crime happening. And then I really, really enjoyed like the books discussion of grief and like the way that this family this boy and his father dealt with that and like how their relationship was kind of strained and also strengthened at the same time through the death of this mom so overall just like such a good book like it has so many things in it that i like um the characters were really likable and i just read this book like seriously it's so good all right after that i listened to the night swim um the night swim by megan golden this book i gave a three out of five stars this book was just okay um i listened to it on audiobook and i would definitely recommend listening to the audiobook version of it because this book has like a podcast element to it um one of the main characters in the book is a like famous podcaster she has like a true crime podcast and every season of her show she investigates like cold cases and like does a deep dive into these cold cases and so then in this story this is like her fourth season of the show and she decides that she's going to cover like a live case that's happening a live trial that's happening in north carolina i think north or one of the carolinas so she's in this small town um podcasting about this case that's happening about a boy who raped a girl trigger warning this book involves rape and so it so sh they're you know going through this trial and as she is like sitting in on this trial she's also like reporting and doing her podcast about it so in the long about way of me saying you should listen to it on audiobook because she she actually does like the podcast you know like you actually hear her hear her podcasting and i feel like that was a good way to listen to it like i feel you get the whole jingle and stuff like it's just feels a little bit more like a podcast than like reading a podcast so i liked that element um so like i said this book follows a podcaster who is covering a crime that happened in this town in North Carolina and then it also follows another woman whose sister died in that same town and she is trying to get the woman who does this podcast to reopen her sister's case so it kind of bounces between the two women and the different cases so you kind of got like two different cases going on um overall I think it was interesting I liked I liked it but it was just like okay you know so after that I listened to The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher and I gave this book a three out of five stars this book was had a strong start for me like I was into it right off the bat but then it was like <sighs> I don't know like halfway through I was like where's the action because it started out and like it was pretty action-packed and then like things got kind of a little stale for me so essentially this book follows a girl who or a woman who has recently gotten a divorce and so she is leaving the town that she was living in and she decides that she's going to move back home 
But then her uncle, who owns a like museum uh, slash gift shop of oddities and curiosities, he calls her and he's like, hey, like I know you really don't get along with your mom. I have a spare room at like the museum if you want to stay there instead of going home like you're more ooh, like you're more than welcome to and she's like that would be great so essentially she's staying at this museum and all of a sudden she finds a portal doorway gateway into another world so like it kind of has like I don't know like Narnia, Lion, the Witch, and Wardrobe vibes, you know, stumbling into a new world through a different doorway vibes, but like creepy, <laughs> okay? So, like I said, starts out really strong, love the creepy, scary Narnia vibes, but then it just kind of got a little like, I don't know, I just didn't think it was like as action packed as it could have been. I think that it could have been, I think that it could have been a little bit spookier so I gave that book a three out of five stars the last book I read this fall I just finished it yesterday you guys you guys I read misery by Stephen King this book was so good like I I loved this book it was so thrilling if you don't know what misery is about I gave this book five out of five by the way it's essentially about a author who gets into a car accident and he is then rescued by his number one fan Annie Wilkes who essentially holds him hostage and like makes him write um, more versions of her favorite books that he writes, the Misery series. It was, uh, so essentially the only two characters in this book are Annie and Paul. And I thought that would be maybe kind of boring, but just, the way this book is written, like the way that they go into, that Stephen King goes into detail about these characters and about their lives and like about the events that ensue over the months that he is held hostage by this woman and like his relationship with her as his captor is fascinating. It is thrilling. It was just like, I mean like when he's in that wheelchair and like trying to escape or like find just like heart pounding and like the last hundred pages of this book oh my god like I just it was nightmarish but like in the most beautiful way it was a really good book this was a really good book and I've actually never seen this movie so I am so excited to watch the movie now because I love this book I've, wa I've watched a lot of Stephen King movies um but this is not one that I have seen so I am really really excited to watch the movie now would recommend for sure this made me like really excited to start getting into more Stephen King books as well let me talk about a few books that are on my winter tbr <laughs> she's a booktuber or whatever with her tbr okay so the first book that i want to read i think i'm probably going to read it like tomorrow this is like a thin quick read i think but i think it's going to be really fun i'm going to read trixie and katia's guide to modern womanhood this book has been nominated for Best in Comedy for the Goodreads Choice Awards 2020. And my best friend, Sarah, hi Sarah, got this book for me for my birthday and I still haven't read it yet. So this is on my TBR for the winter. I'm gonna, I wanna read this book before December is over because 
I just, I just fucking love Trixie and Katia. Like, ugh, this one just has like such fun photos in it. Like, look at them. I love them. I love them so much. Small Business Saturday, Naverday. Small Business Saturday. Lucas and I went downtown to one of our local bookstores called Copperfields. They have quite a few locations here in the uh, North Bay area. A beautiful bookstore. Their whole downstairs is all used books and then they have new books on the first floor. So I bought a few things there on Small Business Saturday. This book right here is called In a Holidays and it is by Christina Lauren. This book is actually a romance, not like something that I'm typically into, but I've been seeing Noelle Gallagher here on YouTube, also from the Bay Area, recommending a lot of different romances. And I'm like, well, if, she, if Noelle likes it, like I'll like it because I feel like I love everything that she recommends, so. I'm gonna read this book. I mean, I don't think that she like has read it and then recommended it because of it, but I'm like, you know, like I said, she's been recommending a lot of romances. So I'm like, maybe I wanna read a romance, you know? This one is obviously like Christmas themed. It follows a girl who is um, spending the holidays at her family's cabin in Utah. She gets into an accident. It's kind of like a Groundhog's Day situation. So I think it's gonna be cute and like festive, you know, like very Lifetime Hallmark Channel Christmas movie. I think it's gonna be good. So super excited about that one. And then I also picked up the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book I've heard nothing but good things about. I honestly don't know what it's about. I guess I could read the back of it, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. So I picked it up because I wanna read it. Um, another book that I would like to read this winter is called Pretty Things. This is by Janelle Brown. This book has been on my list for a while to read and I saw it in the used book section. So I was like, Four. So I picked this one up. This one I think follows like two girls who are kind of like running a scam or something. So juicy. I also placed an order from thriftbooks.com on Black Friday. They had like a 15% off promotion going on for their used books. Um, so thriftbooks.com is just like a website where you can purchase new and used books. If I can purchase a book used, I would rather do that because it's better for the environment, better for your pocket, like, it's just, it's so awesome that we can buy used books. So, why would you not? Um, so, I picked up a few books from there. I picked up The Troop, which is supposed to be, like, gory. <laughs> gory. So, I'm excited to read that. I also picked up Bunny. And then I picked up two other things. And then I purchased Circe, I think is how you say it. This one is one that's kind of based off of like a Greek myth from what I understand. Don't know much about that one, but I've heard good things, so I'm gonna read that. And then I also purchased The Flight Attendant, which I was like, did I get that book? Because I really wanna read it. So I purchased The Flight Attendant. Um, not sure who it's by. I can Put it somewhere here um so that one they just turned into an hbo show and the show looks really good but i'm gonna read the book before i watch the show so i'm gonna read that one probably hopefully in december and then also for the winter i want to read mexican gothic that one just popped up on my library i can i might my ticket's about to come up <laughs> in the library, so I can read that as well. All right, you guys, so those were the books that I read all this fall, and then some of the books that I plan to read this December and this winter. 
If you've read any of the books that I talked about today, let me know your thoughts and opinions on them down below. If you have any recommendations, let me know. If you've read any of the books that I said that I wanted to read, let me know. Let's talk about books, baby, okay? So, just a quick reminder, a really good way that you can read books for free is through your local library. A lot of libraries aren't open right now, but um, I know all the ones around here are doing pickup if you like a physical book, and most libraries have a giant, giant library online where you can listen to audiobooks, read ebooks, watch movies, read magazines, all kinds of things for free just for having a library card. Libraries are the fucking best. We need to support them, so get a library card, you guys, because they're awesome. <laughs> also, just a reminder to shop at local bookstores and buy use when you can. So, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye!